Hey guys, welcome to Generation Tech. So we've been talking about the size and specifications of massive spaceships that the average person would never have any hope of purchasing. But now let's take it down to earth and look at some ground transportation that the average citizen in the Star Wars universe just trying to make ends meet like this security guard, this animal trainer, this jazz musician, or this exotic dancer could afford. Number one. Anakin's pod racer. Anakin Skywalker, as a nine-year-old boy, somehow managed to construct this state-of-the-art pod racer that could achieve speeds of almost 600 miles per hour. That's the speed of a 747 with a good tailwind, but still a little bit short of the Earth's ground speed record, which was set by the British Thrust SSC in 1997 at 760 miles per hour. Oh, how proud I am. But you know, this pod racing thing, it's a dangerous sport. I don't know what Anakin's mother was thinking. You sit behind these two engines that let out this right in your face in a type of vehicle that sometimes just randomly explodes. The course takes you through caves and then through the ghetto where you get shot at. I mean, when I was nine years old, I was watching WWF and listening to the Spice Girls. I show how old I am, I still remember when it was called WWF. Anyway, the pod racer was 3.15 meters long with engines that measured 7 meters in length. If it pulled up next to Alan's secondhand Camry at the lights, it would look like this. Alright, that's not really a worthy opponent. Here it is next to Thrust SSC. Next up, we have the 74Z speeder bike. This was used by Imperial forces and then hijacked by rebel scum in Return of the Jedi. I like to think of this as the 150cc dirt bike of the Star Wars ground vehicles. The Empire had stripped off most of the non-essential technology to increase its maximum speed. And this thing was fast. According to certain sources, not really canon, its maximum speed was somewhere between 220 and 310 miles per hour. At 310 miles per hour, this would frickin' hurt. After the Battle of Endor, you could pick up a second-hand speeder bike for around 3,000 galactic credits. What a bargain! Next up is Luke's land speeder. This convertible X-34 land speeder is a classic. Unlike with the pod racer, the engines are behind you. It hovered about one meter off the ground and could reach speeds of about 150 miles per hour. It was about 3.4 meters long, about the same length as the Fiat 500. And sorry to disappoint everyone who thought Luke's speeder was awesome, the actual prop was built on the chassis of a 750cc three-wheeled English car called the Bond Bug. Kind of similar to the Reliant Robin, and we know what a glamorous vehicle that was. The prop speeder used mirrors angled 45 degrees to the ground to hide the wheels. Next, Ray's speeder. Ray built the speeder herself using two turbojet engines from an old cargo hauler. Thus, it was able to carry a considerable amount of freight. When it wasn't fully loaded, it could achieve higher speeds and a considerable height off the ground. At 3.73 meters long, it was just a little bit shorter than the Ford Fiesta. And while I think Ray's speeder would win in a race at the lights, I think the Ford Fiesta would win on miles to the gallon. Now let's take a look at something a little bit bigger. Jabba's sail barge. Jabba was a hut, and huts really were kind of like the 1% of the galaxy. They relied on the proceeds of organized crime to fund their opulent lifestyles. They were often obese, just like a lot of humans who lived the good life at the expense of those below them. And just like the 1% on Earth who enjoy sun, sand, girls in bikinis, and luxury yachts, Jabba the Hutt enjoyed sun, sand, girls in bikinis, and his luxury yacht, the Sail Barge, had more of an industrial feel. This retro, rusted steel would make a Williamsburg hipster drool all over his beard. The Sail Barge was 30 meters long, that's the same length as this luxury yacht, but surprisingly required a crew of 26 to operate, and it could take up to 500 passengers. 
You know, I know Jabba the Hutt got a lot of negative press, but there is one really positive thing that could be said about him. His sail barge was very environmentally friendly. It could propel itself at a speed of almost 20 miles per hour on its sails alone. This environmental activism really makes up for some of the bad things he did. <laughs> Alright, maybe not. Next up we have the Jawa Sand Crawler. At 40 meters long and 20 meters high, it was basically the same size as a six-story building on wheels. These vehicles were developed during a mining boom on Tatooine, but were later adopted by the Jawas as scrap collection vehicles. One vehicle could house an entire Jawa clan and their scrap collection activities. Next up, some Imperial vehicles. The ATST Walker was a heavily armored Imperial combat vehicle that walked kind of like a chicken. At 8.6 meters tall, it was basically the height of a house. Its weaknesses were revealed during the Battle of Endor. <laughs> And this sentence was added to the user manual. ATSTs will no longer be deployed on planets with an abundance of trees or other known obstacles such as rock-wielding primitives. I would say that's pretty good advice. Next up, we have the big brother of the ATST, the ATAT -AT Walker. At 22 meters high, it's a similar size to the Jawa sand crawler, the height of a six or seven story building. Each foot would be the size of an SUV. It was designed this way because its predecessor, the ATTE, was very vulnerable to landmines. Imagine, instead of building these to protect our soldiers, we instead built these. The US Army has actually developed a similar machine, the LS-3, but you could probably only fit one Marine on it and they'd still be too close to the ground, but it's a start. Lastly, we have the A6 Juggernaut. This vehicle, at 50 meters long, is in the range of some of the biggest machines ever built on Earth. It dwarfs this mobile launch platform for the space shuttle and is two and a half times the length of the biggest mining truck ever built. It was basically a super large tank that could carry up to 300 troops and crazily, it could travel at up to 100 miles per hour, which is insanely fast for such a big vehicle. The Caterpillar 797 mining truck can only maintain a top speed of 42 miles per hour, and it's only about a third the size of the Juggernaut. It was like every 10 year old's dream, which is ironic because the clones operating these during the Republic era were actually only 10 years old. They were all child soldiers. Man, the Republic was messed up. So guys, that's a quick rundown of some of the ground transportation vehicles in the Star Wars universe. I know we haven't mentioned all of them, so please leave your comments about your favorite ground transportation vehicle and we can fight it out down there. I want to say a big thank you to all our Patreon supporters. Your support means a lot to us. If you'd like to support us on Patreon or you'd just like to find out more, feel free to click the link on screen in just a moment. Don't forget, subscribe to our channel, give this video a like, and if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech. Thank you.